Welcome to the farm. I'm going to try something new today. Not new in what I'm going to cook, but new in that I'm videoing it. So be patient with this and be, uh, be kind uh, because I've never done anything like this before. What I'm going to make is individual chicken pot pies. Uh, but I thought what I would do first is show you how I make my pastry. It's the same pastry for chicken pot pies as I use when I make cobbler pies. So the first thing we do to make this, and this is very simple, you can make homemade pastry if you're going to make cobblers, that is. So the first thing that we do is we take a cup and a half of plain flour. Get my biscuit cutter out of there. So a cup and a half of plain flour. Now, you can tell I'm real uh, concerned with, with measurements here. So that's, that's about a cup and a half. Okay. Then we have one tablespoon of sugar. And it says three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. Now, I can't find my teaspoon measure anywhere, so I've got a half teaspoon. So we'll do a heaping half teaspoon. That'd be like that. The next thing that it takes is one stick or one fourth of a pound of butter. So this last butter that I bought is not divided up into sticks or pounds either. So what I had to do was I measured it and then measured in half and then measured in half again. So I've got it in the fourth. So one fourth of a stick or one fourth of a pound of butter. Okay. Now then we'll take that that quarter pound of butter. And cut that up into the flour. Make sure you get all the little pieces of paper off of it. So just cut it into chunks. It doesn't really matter if it's uniform or because we're just gonna we're gonna work it into this flour here. Alrighty. Now then, take our pastry cutter and cut that up. Just mash it up into there. And we want to get that. See, what I'm doing here is I'm just mashing this butter up, cutting this butter up. I don't have a, uh, a, mix, a mixer or a, or a food processor, so everything I do is just, just pretty much done by hand. It's not that hard to do. Just do it by hand. You want to cut this up into, oh, maybe pea size, frozen peas, pea size, um, just little chunks. Because as you make your pastry, this will um, this will show up, or it will melt into your pastry. You'll see hunks of the butter in your pastry, which is what I think makes it really good. I keep working this in. I've got all my uh, utensils and all my ingredients out here for making the, uh, the chicken pot pies. I wasn't sure exactly how to go about doing this, but I thought, well, I'll just, I'll just try it and see how this works. I'm very thankful to a good friend of mine who uh, gifted me this tripod and, and uh, made it possible for me to video at a remote. Okay, that's, that's just about worked up enough, I think. Something on the table is rattling as I, as I work on this. Our kitchen table is, is a catch-all. Uh, uh, everything that I'm working on, you may, I don't think you can see in the video, I've got all my supplies over here for making hot tamales. It's tamales time of the year, and so I just leave everything out because I know I'm going to need it again. All right, got that worked up into small chunks in there. All right. The next thing we do 
is you mix this with a little bit of ice water. Now, uh, let's see, the recipe that I have here actually calls for um, about a quarter teaspoon of almond extract. I, I just prefer to use vanilla, and so I'll use about a quarter to half, half a teaspoon, something like that. Okay, then this is what you call a poor man's dough hook. I just use a fork. And so I pour a little bit of water, ice water. You do need to use ice water. Your butter, of course, needs to be very cold. And I just begin stirring that around and around and working the flour in as I stir it around. As you'll see, as you stir around, it begins to connect together. I just keep stirring. Just keep working it around. If it begins to get real shaggy and real dry, you might need just a little, just a little extra water. Yeah, perfect. You just keep working it around and around. Just keep stirring around and around. See how it begins to come together? Begins to make a ball. And when you've worked all the, the flour up into it, and it makes a ball, okay. then take a piece of plastic wrap, Put it over the dough. Put it over, let it dump, fall down into your hand on the plastic wrap. Fold the plastic wrap up over it. Put that in a plastic bag and put it in your refrigerator for at least a couple of hours or overnight. Uh, what I'm getting ready to use has been in there for, I don't know, four or five days. But this also freezes really well. So when I'm going to make this, I figure if I'm going to make the mess, if I'm going to be into it, I might as well make up several balls. So I usually do three or four balls of this at a time and put it in the freezer and it keeps really well for six to eight months or, or even a little longer than that. Get my plastic bag here and put that in. I'll put that down in this plastic bag. And then I'll put it in a freezer bag and label it. And this time we want a pie, all I have to do is thaw my dough and we're ready to go. So there. All right. The next thing we're going to do, that, that is how I made my pastry for these, uh, these pot pies. Let me stick this in the refrigerator. All right. I've already mixed up my uh, chicken pot pie mixture. I use, uh, for this, if I'm going to make several, I use frozen vegetables. You can get these in bags at, at uh, your grocery store or at Sam's or any uh, uh, large area, you know, where you, where you buy uh, things in large amounts like that, Sam's or Costco. So I put that, emptied those into this bowl. I cooked chicken last week. I cooked several several pieces of uh, chicken breast, picked it off the bone and saved that. Put the rest of this in the freezer and use it for other dishes or for uh, um, sandwiches or anything, enchiladas, anything you want to use uh, cut up chicken for. But anyway, I mix that together with the chicken. Use uh, uh, cream of chicken soup, one or two cans, depending on how much uh, uh, how much vegetables you have, how much chicken you have, how many you want to make at a time. Salt and pepper. Uh, and about the only other seasoning I use in this is a little bit of thyme. I really like thyme uh, with chicken. So that's what I've put in here. I've got this all stirred up uh, and ready to go. I don't need that anymore. Okay, set this back over here out of the way. Now this is the pastry that I made a few days ago. I've taken these small cornware bowls and greased each one of them 
with a little bit of Crisco, which is what I usually use on something like this. However, however you want to grease them will be just fine, but they need to be greased with something. I've got, let's see, I don't know if the camera shows it, but I've got two, four, six, eight, I've got nine of those little rascals greased up. Now I've got two balls of dough. I probably won't end up showing all of these on this video because it, it will get a little redundant. But what we do with this, uh, and by the way, this this uh, dough board, I have a friend, uh, he's passed away now, uh, Charlie Mead, was a great woodworker. He was a member, of, uh, we were members together of the Foothills Craft Guild, and Charlie, Charlie was a special guy, and he made this dough bowl. A dough board for me. We we called it my dumpling dough board because I make chicken and dumplings a lot and I needed something large to to work them out on. So what we'll do is we'll take this, see how I had it wrapped in the plastic as I did the other dough. Take a little bit of flour. Spread a little flour around. Okay. And I found uh, through trial and error that one batch of the dough will make about three of these little pot pies. So what I'll do is I just cut this into thirds and you know, I don't, won't measure it. And I'm going to save the leftover pieces and use them anyway so it really doesn't matter. So we take this and I've had this out of the refrigerator for a little while letting it get a little bit to room temperature. Just mash that down a little round round disc out of it. Now I make these like I do my cobbler pies. They're nothing pretty to look at. They're not fancy pies, but they are really good. We we'll take our Owen pin here. And roll these out. Work your flour back under it so that it doesn't stick. And sort of keep this well, depending on whether you're using a square or a round bowl, keep it kind of square or keep it kind of round, whichever one you're working with makes it fit a little better. The first ones of these that I made, I actually tried doing the bottom crust and then putting a top crust on it and, and trying to make it look all pretty, but this works better, and I think it tastes better. So... We don't want to roll this out too thin because what we'll do is once we bake these and they cool, then we'll put them in the freezer, just in the bowl like they are and let them freeze um, at least overnight. So sometime tomorrow then, I will take these out, set the, take them out of the freezer, set this in a pan of just lukewarm water, just all about halfway up of the dish. As it begins to thaw out the bottom, they will turn loose pop right out of this and then you can put them in bags and freeze them and then all you have to do when you get ready to eat them, pop them in the microwave, put them back in the oven and they're ready to go. So what we'll do, we've got our pastry here. Take our first one, flop it over, just work it down in the bowl. Okay, where it fits the bowl. Take our pot pie mixture, fill it about, oh, about two-thirds full, I guess, it's about right. You can make them any size you want, you can make bigger dish. In fact, this is how I make the chicken pot pies if I'm going to make one for our family, although I generally use uh, fresh vegetables or uh, you can use vegetables that you've frozen from your garden, vegetables that you can. Any way you want to do that. You can use chicken, you can use beef, you can use deer, you can use anything you want in these. However you like them, whatever kind of mixture of vegetables and meat that you like. Then I'll take the tops. Uh, that's a little bit more pastry than we need there, so begin to fold this back over. So it just sort of covers the top, doesn't have to cover it exactly. And there we go. There's the first one. All right, I'll save that. Yeah. We'll do one more. I don't see that it's necessary to, 
to do all, all nine of these. But let's do one more. We'll work this one around, this pastry. In fact, this seems to be a little bit smaller piece of pastry. So let's work this into it that we cut off of the other one. Nothing fancy in my kitchen, nothing fancy here on the farm. Plain food, plain cooking, for plain people, I guess you could say. You want to make sure that you keep enough flour on this so that it doesn't stick. If I'm making chicken and dumplings, I use self-rising flour. If I'm making pastry, I'll use plain flour. I forgot to mention that at the beginning. And don't ask me why. <laughs> that's just, that's the recipe that I have. My mother taught me to make chicken and dumplings. That's the way she said to do it. And I didn't question. Because they are delicious. Okay. We've got that. Roll it out. It's big enough to cover our next one. Work it down in there. These these are great time savers if you're if you make meals for uh, shut-ins or uh, if you know someone has a new baby. And you, or you want to plan ahead if you know you're about you're going to have surgery or you're going to be incapacitated in some way and you need to have food available. These work out great and they're so easy to make. In, a, in an afternoon, I can make eight or nine of these. Okay, there we go. Whoop. Just has flour on it. Put it right back in. Alright. Roll the tops over. Alright. There we go. I hope you enjoyed it.